Hey everyone, and welcome back. My name is Athenas, and this is Mode Bespoke. For today's project, we're going to be crocheting these Tunisian crochet mittens. So we are going to be using some of the stitches that we learned in our Tunisian 101 course last week. So let's get started. Okay, for our supplies today, we're going to be using a size 4 yarn. So this can be any yarn that you want, just a medium size 4. We're going to use a 6 millimeter hook. We're going to need some stitch markers. So you can use anything you want. You can use safety pins, you can use stitch markers like these. Um, you can use some bobby pins if you want to, or little pieces of yarn. You're going to need a pair of scissors and a yarn or tapestry needle. Alright, so let's get started with this mitten. The pattern we're going to work today is going to be for adults. So if you want to make these for children, wait till the end of the video. We'll go over how to resize it. That way you know where to take the different measurements and that way you can resize your mitten. But for today's tutorial, we're going to be doing, we're going to be working on the adult sizes. Now on the written pattern, you're going to see three sizes. It's going to be adult small, medium, and large. So pay attention to those because they are color coordinated so that you know how many stitches go into the different ones. Um, so for this, it's made up of a couple of different parts. So let's just kind of cover this real quick, especially for anyone who's going to be using the written pattern, which if you want the written pattern, just look down in the description box below. It'll take you over to my website where you can purchase the PDF pattern. All right, so here we go. So this top part is called the closure. And then we have the hand, which is where your hand goes. Then you have the cuff, which is going to be the elastic band here at the bottom and you're gonna have the thumb now the thumb is made up of two parts so you have the thumb and then this wider part is the thumb gusset so those are the two parts of this so let's get started here with the um, elastic band or the cuff and this one is gonna be the same regardless of what size um, mitten you make so whether you make this the adult small or the adult large you're gonna start the cuff the same and you're gonna do this with just a slip knot, and then we are going to chain seven. Now we're going to move a little bit quickly here, so I do have a beginner Tunisian um, tutorial for this. So we're going to use the knit stitch and the purl stitch. So if you look here, this is made up of purl stitches, so this is purl and knit, and then the hand is just made up of knit stitches. The thumb is single crochet. So those are the stitches we're going to be using for this. If you don't know how to knit any of those, look up here on top of the video. I'll link a video, so it's going to be the, the beginner Tunisian video, where I will show you how to do the knit and the purl stitch. So give that a little bit of a practice and then come back and work here. So let's get back to our um, cuff. We're going to start with chain seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five six and seven so now that you have your seven um, chains you're gonna work into the second one so skip the first stitch go into the second one and you're going to cast on for every one of the stitches here on the chain so we're gonna go there's one two and then remember that to cast on you're just inserting your hook into the chain stitch and pulling up a loop. So there we go. Now that you have cast on, we have to work a return pass. So the return pass, for the most part, they're all going to be the same up until we get to the closure on the glove. So right up here, where, or not the glove, the mitten, I should say. So the top part of the mitten, which is the round part for your fingers, we're going to do some decreases there. But for the most part, the return pass is going to be the same on nearly every part of the uh, of the mitten. So we're going to start with yarn over and pull through one and then yarn over pull through two in all of the remaining loops until you have just one loop left. So see one loop left on your hook and there we go. Now for this first row because the cuff is just a two row repeat so you're going to work a row of purl knit purl knit purl knit until you complete the length. So our first row is going to be a row of purl stitch. 
So remember to just yarn over, so it's reverse yarn over, insert your hook into the second stitch, and then loop your yarn in front of your hook or below it, yarn over, and finish your stitch. So just purl in every one of the stitches. Again, if you need a refresher, check out that uh, Tunisian 101 video where we go through all of these really, really slowly so that you can practice. So get a good feel for those and then we can keep working here. All right, so there's our row of purl. Now we have to work a return pass. So yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over two, 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 until you have just one loop on your hook. So that was our first row. So row one is this purl st um, stitch row. The second row is going to be a row of knit stitch. So for our knit stitch, there are the two threads in our stitch. We're going to insert a hook in between those two threads and towards the back. So yarn over and pull up a loop. So that was a knit stitch. So insert your hook and pull up a loop. Insert and pull up a loop and just continue until you get to this last stitch, and on this last stitch, you're going to do the same. Just go through the back of these two loops, and you're going to pull up your loop. So there we go. We've cast on all, all of our knit stitches, and now we just complete a return pass. And there we go. So that is two rows right there. So the row of purl is one, the row of knit is two. So there's two rows for the different sizes. Now, if you're making a, the small or the medium mitten, you're gonna work a total of 28 rows. So this will be 28 rows from here to here. If you are doing the, if you're making the large mitten, you're gonna work 34 rows. So also make sure that if it's for you, just try it on, make sure that it's comfortable. It should be not snug exactly, but it should fit comfortably. You should still be able to hold on to both sides and pull your hand up. So you want it to fit comfortably so that it, it moves. It's still nice and tight enough that you don't think the cold air will come in, but there you go. So if you change the number of rows that, you, that you're gonna make, make sure to write that down so that your second mitten matches. So once you have completed your 28 rows, you have to end in a row of purl stitch so that the very last row is going to be a row of purl and that is so that when we sew the mitten closed um, you'll have a seamless uh, cuff so we're just going to do this last row here so that i can show you how we're going to do a bind off because with tunisian crochet you have to do uh, your last row has to be what is called a bind off and I'll show you why here in just a second. And that is because your stitches, last stitch is really open. So we need to close these spaces out. So for this one, I'm just gonna work a row of slip stitches. So starting in the second stitch of the row, I'm just gonna insert my hook as if I were crocheting a knit stitch. So right between both threads of the stitch, we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull up a loop. And then we're going to pull this top loop through this bottom loop to make a slip stitch, like so. And then just do it again in every stitch of the row. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, slip stitch. Oh, I lost my yarn there. Let's do that one again. And what that'll do is it's going to close off these spaces so that you don't have these big gaps in between and you'll get cold air in there. You're gonna do the same in the very last stitch of the row. So slip stitch. So there you go, see it's closed off this top part. Then what you're gonna do is just chain one and that chain one is gonna make a little knot down here. You can tighten it up and you're gonna cut your yarn. Leave a nice little tail end, which you're gonna weave in at the end. So complete your first cuff and then go through, if you wanna make your second cuff, go for it you're going to need two of them and then you're going to have to weave in your ends so make sure that you don't have any ends sticking out anywhere if you don't know how to weave in ends i'll link a video up here um, and it'll 
it'll show you how to weave in all of your ends. So once you've completed your, your little um, cuffs, we're gonna start with the body of the, the mitten, which is the hand. So you're gonna see that on the written pattern. So for the hand, all you're gonna do is just knit stitch. So all of this is just a big square or rectangle of knit stitch. So for this, you are gonna have different sizes. So across, it is gonna be 30 stitches across. So you're gonna chain 30, and this worked just fine if it comfortably for a small glove and then for the large glove. And then I had my husband try it out um, to make sure that it fit him quite comfortably and he was able to close his hands and everything very well. If you have really, really wide hands, then chain a few more stitches, but 30 stitches is should be more than enough because what this is gonna do is we're gonna fold this in half later and this is gonna be the hand part of the mitten. So, like so. Okay, so let's get started with the hand. Okay, so let's start with the hand of the glove, of the mitten. I keep calling them gloves, they're mittens. So to start this, we're gonna start with just a slip stitch, and then we're gonna chain 30. So again, this is for any size mitten, whether it's the small or the large. And once you've made your chain, so remember chain 30, you're gonna go into the second stitch from your hook and you're just gonna cast on. So there's from the second one and then pull up a loop for every stitch of your chain. And once you've cast on, you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna do it just a regular return pass. So it's yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over two, 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 until you finish the row and you're left with just the one loop on your hook. So the next row is with the row that you're gonna repeat uh, throughout the entire work and it's just a knit stitch row. So remember that your stitch has both threads, the front and the back one. You're gonna insert your hook in between those, yarn over and pull up a loop. And that's all there's to it. So do this in every stitch of your row until you get to this last one. You're gonna just insert your hook here behind both of those loops and pull up a loop. And there we go, we've cast on a knit stitch for every stitch of our row. Now you just complete a return pass and it's yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two until you finish the whole row. So now, you're gonna continue doing this for a different number of rows, so it just depends on what size mitten you want. Um, again, this is really easily adjustable, so if it's for you or for somebody in your home that you know is really, it, that is accessible that you can just ask to measure this up against their hand, then it becomes really easy. But for the small mitten, you are going to crochet a total of 30 rows. So here, we've already crocheted two rows of knit stitch. So it's the one that we did together, and then the one that I crocheted while I was explaining all this to you guys. So we have two rows of knit stitch. For the small glove, you need 30 rows. For the medium, it's 34, so it's a little bit longer. And for the large glove, you need 39, so it's significantly longer. So 30, 34, 39, and that is for small, medium, and large. So this is all in available in the written pattern too. So once you finish, your work is gonna look here, let me clear this out real quick. So your work is gonna look like this. So this is gonna be one large square or rectangle, because it'll look a little more rectangular if you're making the large gloves. But here you go. Once you've completed all of your rows, we have to start working the closure, which is the top round part of our mitten. So you're gonna need to do, you're gonna need to measure this in half. So the easiest way for me is just fold it in half, so see vertically, so that your stitches look like this. Line everything up as best as you can. And then just grab a stitch marker and place it in the centermost stitch right here. So just right there. And that's gonna tell us where to stop crocheting so that we can make this round part here and then we're gonna make another round part here. So now the closure consists of, it's just one row repeat for a total of five rows. 
If you're making the large glove, you can make a sixth row um, if you want it to be a little more round, but that's an optional round. So you're, you're not gonna see that one on the pattern. You're only gonna see um, the five decrease rows. So for the decreases, we're gonna do those in the return pass. So when you cast on, you're just gonna cast on like you normally would. So it's just cast on for knit stitches until you get to the stitch marker. So here we go. So once we've gotten here to the stitch marker, you're gonna crochet that last stitch. You're just gonna work it into the stitch with the stitch marker, and then you're gonna do your return pass. And when you start your second repetition of this on this side, we're gonna begin on the stitch marker. So I'll say that again a little bit later, it'll make more sense. Okay, but once you've cast on all of your stitches up until you get to your stitch marker, we have to work a decrease return pass. So for the decrease return pass, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops. So yarn over, pull through two, and then you just yarn over, pull through two until you have three loops left on your hook. So you don't do the yarn over, pull through one. You start with yarn over, pull through two. So there we go. Now that you have three loops left on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we have now decreased. So now when you start the row, instead of skipping just the first stitch, you're gonna skip the first two stitches. So you're gonna go into the third stitch and then you start casting on. You're gonna do the same on the other end. So the other end, this stitch we're gonna, I'm gonna show you here in a minute. It looks like an upside down V. So this part, if you have trouble seeing it, because it, it does get a little confusing, but you're gonna see a diagonal stitch. So there's, here, let me get you this one. There's the, the diagonal stitch, and then there's the stitch right before it. So skip this stitch, which is the second to last stitch of the row. Skip this one and go into the last stitch, which is diagonal. And then you work, you pull up a loop like so. So if it is easier for you to see, because if you're watching a movie or you can't see it, um, you can't always notice this last stitch, I have found that if you just throw a stitch marker on there, so throw it on this last stitch, it makes your life a lot easier. So that, that part's not on the pattern, but you know, maybe it helps somebody. Okay, so we have to do another decrease row. So just yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over two, yarn over two, yarn over two. So it's just your decrease return pass until you have three loops left on your hook, and then you yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's it, that's all there's to it. So we have completed two rows. You need a total of five. So complete um, your five rows, and then we're gonna do a bind off and start our second repetition on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue, but let me work on this one really quickly just to show you what it looks like. So remember to always skip your first two stitches. So work your first cast on stitch into that third stitch of the row. So if you used the stitch marker at the end of the row. So you've got your stitch marker. So it's at this very end. So you're gonna very easily see that second to last stitch that you have to skip. It's right here, because here's that last stitch. So you just work your last stitch of the row into the stitch with the stitch marker. And there you go. And then just a return pass. So I'll let you, leave you to finish the remaining, well now two rows, um, so that you can complete your five and I'll see you here again in a minute so that we can complete a bind off. Okay, so I've completed my five rows and then that's my five rows and my decreases. And as you can see, it is now starting to round up up here. If you still wanted to do one last row, uh, row because you wanted it a little more rounded, you can go ahead and do a sixth one. Just remember that for when you do the next, the other side and your second glove. So jot that down somewhere. Um, once you finish that, we have to work a bind off remember that the spacing up here is a little bit wider than it is between the stitching down here. So we want to close off these spaces so that you don't get any cold air in your mittens. So we're going to skip this first stitch. We're going to go into the second one and we're just going to slip stitch. So insert your hook like you would a knit stitch and then you're going to pull up a loop 
and then pass this top loop through this bottom loop to make a slip stitch. Now go into the second one and do the same. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and slip stitch. You're going to do this for the remaining stitches of the row, and that includes that very last diagonal and the second to last stitch as well. So we're doing this for all of the stitches. There we go, and then here's our last two stitches of the row. So here's that second to last one, and the last stitch of the row as well. So there we go. Here's the top part of our mitten. And now you're going to chain one, tighten up the knot, and cut your yarn. So leave a nice long tail end. You're going to weave that in later. Now you just pull your hook along with your yarn and tighten your knot. So there we go. So we're going to do the same on this other side. Okay, so now we have to repeat this whole section on this side. So we're going to remove our stitch marker and right on that last stitch. So you see where this comes into this stitch? Right in this next vertical stitch, you're going to insert your hook. So that's where your stitch marker would have been. So your stitch marker is right here. Go into this stitch right there. You don't want to leave a whole lot of space between both sides, uh, both closures of the mitten so that it's when you fold it, it's a lot rounder and a little bit more cleaner. If you forget, you make it a little bit wider, it's not a big deal, you can fix it when you sew it. But let's start on this side. Here we go. You're just gonna grab your yarn, leave a nice long tail end, wrap it around your hook, and you're gonna pull that through your stitch. And you drop that tail end, and you just start casting on. So just go into the next stitch and just keep on going. This first stitch is going to get loose as you go, so that's why I leave a nice tail end. You can pull it. We're just going to cast on here. There we go. And once you have cast on, you just repeat what we did over on this side. So you begin your return pass with your yarn over pull through two because it is a decrease return pass and you just continue the return pass like we did on the other section working a decrease return pass and you're going to complete a total of five rows and then complete your bind off once you have completed the bind off here see we're at the end uh, once you have completed that bind off go through weave in all of your ends so that your work looks like this so it's all woven in, it's ready to go. And then we're gonna cover how to make the thumb and I'll show you how to sew this all together. So now let's start working on the thumb. Now the thumb, you're gonna crochet the same no matter what size uh, mitten you make. So whether it's an adult small or an adult large, you can just crochet the same thumb. Um, I will tell you where you can add a little bit more space if you need to make the thumb a little bit longer. So. Let's just get started here and then I'll, I'll tell you more as we go. So you're gonna start with a magic circle. So you're gonna wrap the yarn around two fingers and you're gonna insert your hook into the space right there in that loop you made. You're gonna grab the yarn back here and you're gonna pull a loop through. So just grab it and pull through. And now I'm just gonna hold this down with my index finger and remove my hand. So instead of pulling on this thread like we normally do for the slip knot, I'm just going to pinch this whole circle down like so and then that way we'll hold all of the yarn down here and we can start making our first stitch in the magic circle so we're going to start with a chain one and then inside the circle we're going to start to crochet five single crochets so very gently just work your hook into the center of the circle yarn over and single crochet so you're going to yarn over and then pull through two. See, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So we're going to make a total of five single crochets in the center of the magic circle. Now, if you have really, really wide thumbs, you can do a sixth one, but five is more than enough. You're just going to pull that thread that we have, so the yarn tail, to tighten the circle. And we're going to work into the very first stitch, so into this stitch right here. 
So we're going to need to slip stitch. So insert your hook into that first stitch and then you're going to yarn over and pull your hook out and you're going to slip stitch. So you're going to pull this top loop through this bottom loop. And then we're going to chain one. And in that chain that we just made, just to make it easier for future rows, I'm going to grab a stitch marker and I'm going to place it right on that chain because we are going to be skipping it. Um, we're not going to be chaining one every time we go around. So to make it easier, grab a stitch marker, a bobby pin, a piece of yarn, anything you want. So we're going to go right into this next stitch and we have to increase. So we're going to single crochet two stitches into every one of the stitches of the round. So there was that first stitch. We're going to go into this second stitch and we're going to single crochet two. So there's one, two, go into the next stitch and single crochet two. And then two in the next stitch. And I'm just going to work through these last remaining stitches quickly. Single crochet two in every stitch until you work your way around. And then I'm going to do two single crochets in this very last stitch as well. There we go. So now we got to our stitch marker and our stitch marker is going to be that chain one that we did at the beginning of the row and we're going to skip it from now on. So let's just move this stitch marker. We're going to work right into this very first stitch and we're just going to single crochet. So this is going to be the first single crochet of the next row. So for this row, we're going to just single crochet one into every stitch of the round. So just one single crochet all the way around. So I'll work on this really quickly. And we're going to repeat this for a total of six rounds. So this is where that stitch marker comes in handy. Because as you're crocheting all the way around, you're going to get to that stitch marker and that's going to tell you that you have now crocheted a round. So let me finish these last couple of stitches. And I'm just going to use these little stitch markers, but you can write it down or you can get little pieces of yarn whenever you want. But once you've crocheted right into the stitch with the stitch marker, just jot it down. You've got one round. So however it is, you can mark it. So I'm just going to put these little stitch markers down. So now I can count my stitch markers and know how many rows I've, I've crocheted or how many rounds I should say. So I've completed another round. I've made it back to my, to the stitch marker. So I'm just going to put another stitch marker down so that I know that I've completed a total of two rows. So keep crocheting until you have completed six rows and then we will move on to the gusset part of the thumb. All right, so here we go. I've crocheted all six rounds. So if you have really long thumbs, you can crochet one more round. So make it a total of seven, but you can measure it just by putting it on your thumb. So if it fits up to here, up to the base of your thumb, you're ready to go. So we are still going to add two more rounds because we still have the gusset to add and that's a total of two rounds. So let's add those two rounds because we need to add a little bit of increases here. So this is going to be round number seven. So we're going to start here. Let me get these out of the way so I don't get confused. So we're going to begin this very first stitch round seven. We're going to crochet two single crochets into that same stitch. So there's one, two. In the next stitch, we're going to crochet one single crochet. And then two in the next stitch. And then one, two in the next stitch. And one. And you're just going to continue to crochet this until you work your way completely around. So I'm almost there. So I'll just keep the camera rolling. There we go. So for my last stitch, I'm just going to crochet just the one single crochet. There we go. We've made it all the way around. Here's our stitch marker. So for round number eight, we're going to crochet one single crochet in every stitch. And this is the last row we need or the last round we need for the thumb piece. So crochet one single crochet in every one of the stitches. And then I'll see you here as soon as I finish. Okay, so I've gone around one last time, so that's round number eight. I'm going to end the round with a chain. So I'm going to chain one because that's going to make a little knot and then just leave a nice, nice long tail end of yarn because you're going to be using this to sew the thumb onto your mitten. So leave a nice long tail and then we're going to pull the, our hook out along with the yarn 
and tighten that little knot you made with that chain one. So there we go. Now I'll pull the little stitch marker off and turn your thumb piece inside out so that you can weave in this little end. So go through, weave that in, tighten it before you do, and then we'll move on to sewing. So here are all the parts that we need for the mitten. We've already crocheted everything and we're ready to put it together. So make sure you've woven in all of your ends and now we can start. So you're gonna need a long piece of yarn. We're gonna be sewing with this, so make it nice and long. And you're gonna just knot one end of it. So let me just thread this through. Where's my yarn needle? So you can use either a yarn or a tapestry needle. So whatever you're most comfortable with. Pull that through. Knot one end of the yarn because you're only gonna work this with just the single thread. So don't, don't double it up or it'll be a little too thick. And we need to sew the cuff onto the hand first. So you're gonna notice that the cuff is a little bit more narrow than the hand. And that is, there we go. So here, let me pull it up here so you can see it. So see, it's a bit more narrow. So and that is so that the cuff will be tied around our wrist. And then we have the hand part, which is a little bit wider. So that's exactly how it should be. So what we're gonna do, is you're just going to pull on the cuff a little bit to stretch it out a bit, and you're gonna pin it down. So you can pin it down using uh, anything that you have. I'm gonna use some of my stitch markers, but make sure that you line up the end here of the cuff along with the end of the hand. So you can use pins, you can use safety pins, whatever it is you have handy. I'm just gonna use these stitch markers. And I'm gonna place a couple of these here. And we're in the middle, so I'm gonna need at least two more. So I'm gonna line that up. And this is just gonna help make the sewing process a little bit easier. And it'll keep, um, it'll keep us from bunching up some of the stitches. So you can just freehand it if you're a little bit better at sewing. But line them up, there we go. So there are two ways that you can do this. If you're not very comfortable sewing with the outside, you can just fold everything inside out and then just sew in just kind of in a circle. So sew in through one direction, come out the other, through both the cuff and the hand. I'm gonna sew on the front of the work. So if you're a little more comfortable sewing, you can do this. So I'm just gonna insert my needle into the very first stitch here on the hand part. And I'm gonna be stitching behind the little knit sections. And then for the cuff, they're little posts that you can see. Here, let me move the, the stitch marker so you can see it better. So you're gonna see these little posts. I'm just gonna sew right behind those. So I'm gonna insert my needle through one side and come out on the other side of the post or the, the stitch if you wanna look at it that way. And then I'm gonna to go to the hand and I'm going to sew right behind that knit stitch. So I'm gonna come in through one side and go out the other side and pull that tight. Now I'm gonna go back to the cuff and sew behind the stitch there. And then back to the hand and stitch there. You can sew this however you feel most comfortable. So you don't have to sew it this way if you don't want to. You can also sew it with a sewing machine if you feel more comfortable doing that. So just continue to sew until you get to the other end and make a knot, weave in your ends, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so on the written pattern, you're going to notice that I talk about folding the mitten in half, and then we're going to start stitching from up here. So first we have to measure the thumb, and to do that, you are going to need um, some stitch markers or something to help you. So just lay your mitten out flat, and you just put your hand on it. Make sure that you measure the cuff where you want it to be along your wrist. So if you want it like that, measure it like so. Lay your hand out flat, and then you're going to lay your thumb open like so. And you're just gonna grab some stitch markers and then just place them on either side of the thumb. So the top and the bottom. This is just to let us know where we need to sew it on. So leave that there. Okay, and now we're ready to start up here. So I'm just gonna start right at the top. There's a bit of a gap here, so I'm just gonna close that since I'm stitching it. And we're gonna sew 
this together much like we did the cuff. So I'm going to stitch on one side and then I'm going to go to the other side. And then this side and this side. And you're going to go all the way around. So stitch all along the top part. Make sure your stitches are nice and tight until you get to that first stitch marker. So when you get to this top stitch marker, this is where we're going to stop and we're going to sew the thumb on. So keep on sewing and I'll see you again in a moment. Okay, so here we go. We've made it to that first stitch marker. Now we have to sew on the thumb. So on the pattern, you'll see that I have the thumb placed this way so that you have your thread coming down the bottom. It doesn't matter. You can have it on the bottom or the top. It's just a little easier to work with if you have it here at the bottom. So what you're going to do, to remove these stitch markers real quick we don't need them anymore and you're going to line up your thumb along with your mitten so line up the edges and then we're just going to sew on one side so just go through and sew across make sure you get both the mitten and the glove or in the glove sorry and the thumb Go through both of those. I'm going to need a bigger piece of yarn here. Make sure you only go through the one side. Don't sew all of these together because then you're going to close the, the thumb part and you won't be able to use it um, for the mitten. So just keep sewing along the bottom and I will see you here when we get to the bottom part. So we've reached the bottom of the thumb section. Now make sure you line up your mitten, both sides of the mitten, so that they're completely flush with each other so don't have make sure you don't leave like a big open bump or anything like that just make sure it's completely flush and just keep sewing the same way that we were sewing here at the top we're going to sew along the bottom so with the remaining stitches that we have before we get to the cuff so I'm going to sew here all along this bottom part And just keep sewing all the way down here. Once you get to the bottom part of the cuff, make sure you make a knot, weave in your ends, and then we'll sew the rest of the thumb. So now that we've sewn all the way down to the cuff, we're going to use this thread that we left when we crocheted the thumb part. We're just going to thread that through our yarn or tapestry needle. Yeah. And then you just line up the thumb with the mitten and you're going to start to sew around. Go and on this part, make sure that you're also just grabbing this part and not the other side so that you don't sew the thumb closed. But that's it. Just finish sewing all the way around and you're done. So let's talk about resizing these for kids or if you're going to be using a different size yarn. You're going to need a few measurements for this starting with the wrist. So for the cuff you're going to need to get the measurement for the wrist. You're also going to need the measurement from the widest part of your hand. So whether it's your hand or a kid's hand, get the widest part. You're going to have to double that. So if you can wrap your measuring tape around that's better, um, but if you can't, just go with the widest part and double that. Add a little bit more, so if we're going to do this, like here for instance, grab that, and then it'll be, it's three and a half inches, so I just round up to four. So just make it just a little bit wider than you need, just so that you make sure that you have enough room so that you can bend your fingers when you're wearing your mittens. So the other measurement is going to be from the bottom of your hand, so from the base right here, all the way to the fingertips so the highest fingertip you'll need that length as well so that way you know how wide or how long to make your cuff one so that's that measurement you're gonna need how wide you need the hand part of the mitten so we chained 30 but if you have a different measurement say it was for a kid we went with four inches so we're gonna have to crochet whatever eight inches is so um, crochet a chain that is the length that you need across so go all the way until eight inches and then that's how long your chain needs to be. Then you go ahead and just make the rest of the rows and make as many rows as you need to 
get the measurement from the base of the hand to the fingertip. Make sure you write all of these down uh, because that is not written on the pattern. So make sure that you write all of those down and you have them handy so that you can make both of your mittens the same size. Now, if you're going to be using a thinner yarn, because these are pretty thick, so they're nice thick winter um, mittens. So if you want something a little bit lighter, you can use a thinner yarn. So if you were using, if you want it thicker and you're using a four yarn, so a three or a four, so you can use, and that would be what, a DK and a worsted. So three or four, you use a six millimeter hook. If you're gonna use a one or a two, so a fingering or a sport yarn, use a three millimeter hook. So this one's six, use a three. I have not made these with a thicker yarn, but if you wanted to try it with a five or six yarn, I would use a nine millimeter hook. So those are three different size yarns you can use, three different size hooks, and the measurements you need to resize this. So I hope that helps. So that was our video tutorial for today. Join me next week when we're gonna be working on another Tunisian crochet project because January is our Tunisian crochet month. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, hit that subscribe button. I post videos every week. Go check out the website. I do have all of the patterns for the projects that you see here on the Mode Bespoke channel. You can purchase the PDF copies to everything. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm always happy to answer them. And go check out my Instagram page where I post all the photos of the projects that we're going to be working on here in the future and all the patterns that you will be able to see on the website. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again next week.